Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are talking a bit about my setup for um, sea trout fishing on the coast here in Denmark. And uh, if there's some new guys out there, um, this might be helpful to you in, in, in terms of what gear to choose or, or some, not, I'm not telling you what gear you should choose, but um, merely some guidelines because there are a lot of rod companies out there and a lot of wheel companies and they all have the best gear for for uh, sea trout fishing or pike fishing or whatever uh, but in my opinion it, it really comes down to the gear that that fits you the best so let's start with the obvious being uh, my fly rod this is a 20 year old G Loomis GLX classic uh, a nine foot six weight. Uh, this rod rocked 20 years ago and it, it still does today, at least in my opinion. But uh, there's a lot of great rods out there and um, find a good store that, that give you the, the right guidance in, in finding a rod that fits your casting technique and, and all that stuff. Most stores will try to sell you a Scott Meridian and yeah, it is a good rod. I'll give them that, but uh, if you're new to the game, it might not be the right rod for you. Try some rods out and uh, see what fits your casting style the best. So on the on the rod I have uh, currently I have an Orvis Hydros SL3. I'm kind of a wheel freak. I sell and buy these wheels all the time. So, but currently I'm I'm fishing this uh, Orvis Hydros. It's a really cool looking looking wheel in this titanium look and uh, the brake is really good on it. On the wheel I have a uh, weight forward, a neutral line and a neutral line is kind of like it's not a floating line and it's not an intermediate line. It, it sinks just below the surface and, uh, and that's what I like because the, the sea trout's feet fairly close to the shore and therefore you don't need uh, a sinking line or, or stuff like that. I, I know guys who, who only fish floating lines I know some guys who only fish intermediate lines. Um, I tend to like the intermediate lines more because they 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 are a bit easier to cast. But um, you don't need you don't need sinking lines or, or stuff like that for uh, coastal fishing uh, here in Denmark at least. On the weight forward line, I have a nine foot long leader, tapered leader, and approximately a meter tippet in the front connected with a, a tippet ring. Sometimes I fish two flies on the on the leader and sometimes just one. Today I'm fishing two. P approximately 80 centimeters back I have the uh, main fly and up here I have the dropper fly. A way to uh, place this dropper fly I use uh, thicker uh, tippet material to keep this uh, from tangling too much. It won't be 100% tangle free, but uh, if, you, if you use a, a thicker tippet uh, for this dropper fly, it, it won't tangle as much on you. Um, here I have 0.30 millimeters and this is a 0.45 and uh, the fish don't care. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it, it will, with a thicker tippet up here, it will, it will naturally stand out from the main line. Um, of course, you need a good set of waders, 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 whatever. I just bought these Sims G3. Uh, I've had a lot of waders over the years, and um, they all break at some point. And uh, I'm hoping these these waders will uh, will last a lot longer than than the other cheaper ones I've had. So uh, yeah, let's see how that turns out. What else do I carry with me? Uh, a landing net, a small one. Uh, this is big enough for, for coastal sea trout fishing. If I get a sea trout above the 60 centimeter mark, I most often will um, pull it on land and, and, and get it that way. I have a wading jacket. Uh, I don't think I will be needing that today because it's fairly warm. I have a sling pack with only the essentials in here. I have my fly box. Let's have a look in that. Um, 
This is, uh, in case you're wondering, this is a CF Design Tarpon box. So really, it's my favorite box because uh, not only does it fit my OCD, that I can place my flies on line here and uh, make it look good, but it also fits um, bigger flies and, and flies with uh, stinger hooks on. And it's waterproof, it's really a really great box. I also carry a small box with Gamoros or Scots or uh, whatever you call these small ones in, in your country. Some tippet rings, a line clipper, although I, I tend to use my teeth anyway. What else we've got in here? Um, some extra liters. This is a fishing certificate. You need one of these if you want to fish in Denmark. And in the front I have um, my tippet, two spools, the point thirty and the point forty-five for the dropper fly. I have some line dressing in here. I have some stripping guards, um, some glow-in-the-dark beads for night fishing, and uh, sunglasses. Uh, they're up here. And that is basically what I have in my bag. Also, I have a stripping basket. Some people like these, some people don't. Um, this is a new design I'm, I just bought recently and uh, so far I'm liking it. It floats and it has some holes in it so the water can run off. And it has some extra features here. I haven't really used them yet, but um, all in all, the, the basket uh, is, is really, it's really good. It's small, light. I like light, and uh, of course, you have to pimp out your stripping basket with all kinds of stickers. And of course, I have a waiting belt. Uh, I don't use the standard belts on on, on any waders. I have I bought uh, a bit wider one because I tend to get uh, a bit back pain after a long day. Um, I'm not that young anymore, so uh, I'm feeling that. <laughs> That's what I carry around. Uh, not much, as you can see. I will also write exactly what I use uh, in terms of tippet and leaders and the line and, and all that stuff. I will leave that down in the description for you guys to check out. So follow me and uh, let's do some fishing. So, sea trout fishing with the coast fly man. Whatever, probably won't catch anything out here because I'm too loud talking to you guys. Just thought I'd try my luck on camera because I do catch more fish off camera. Now, sea trout fishing is hard. Uh, if anyone says it's easy, they're lying. Because you have to walk a lot. If you have a boat, of course, you can move a lot faster. But um, you do have to move. And you do have to find them. But when you find them, um, the, re the reward is just... so much more satisfying in a strange way. I just love sea trucks. They're, uh, they're good fighters. Even the small ones jump like crazy and are uh, really strong. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, the reward of getting one after a few hours of nothing is uh, just makes the whole experience so much better. To me at least. The fly we're tying today is a small mallard bait fish. Um, it's not much to it, so it's basically it's just uh, some mallard feathers, some ice and uh, some UV resin. And yeah, let's, uh, let's just jump straight to it. And uh, once again, I uh, just want to thank every one of you for uh, watching and supporting me. So if uh, some of you aren't already subscribing to my channel 
or following me on my Instagram account, please uh, do that so I can keep making videos for you guys. And uh, I will see you in my next video. All right, friends, let's tie up this gray mallard bait fish here. The thread I'm using is a mono thread. Uh, you can use a white if you want, but uh, or a black, doesn't even, doesn't really matter. You don't have to use the gray mallard feathers. You can, uh, I've tied a few up in brown with a fluorescent orange belly. Uh, you can tie them up in brown, black, whatever color these uh, mallard feathers comes in. You'll be needing two feathers and cut out the tip like this so uh, you get this V shape. This will help to um, taper the back of the fly up so it looks a bit better. Tie the first feather on top here with two loose wraps and pull the feather back like this until you reach the desired length. Now this is a size uh, 10 hook, so it's not that big, and I don't want it that long. I think this is looking good. Secure that up. Now don't worry too much about these um, fibers pointing out in all directions. We will uh, get those under control in just a minute. Turn the fly upside down and place your second feather on the bottom of the hook shank. And again, pull this back carefully till you reach the desired length, I think right around here, and then just distribute the fibers equally on each side of the of the hook bend here. Get that secured. off turn the fly back up now if you're not entirely satisfied with uh, with the thickness of the fly um, you can tie in another feather uh, which I'll think I'll do here um, I think it turned out a bit too slim so just take another feather, prepare it like this. And just tie it in a Now again, this looks like a mess, but uh, we will get that under control with uh, some UV resin. 
in just a minute. Turn off the stem and before you make a whip finish here just press the fly with your with the tip of your fingers like this to help distribute it um, all the way around the hook. finish up here. That's enough because we will be covering this entire front part with UV resin. So this fly isn't coming apart anytime soon. Then place a drop up front here. Let it soak into the feathers while you work your way around here. You don't need a whole lot right at this step. Grab the feathers um, with your thumb and your index finger and twist it like this so you have them all together and slightly push them forward again so you form this this bubble if you can say like that some eyes, place a drop on the side here, put on the eye, like that, and then curl that up so it sticks. Same for the other side. Now you could add some some strands of crystal flash to this fly um, as a lateral line or something like that. It would look pretty cool. Um, but I kind of like this uh, no flashy little fly like it is. But uh, of course it's entirely up to yourself what you want to do with it. Just cover up, make sure you cover the eye so it doesn't come off. And slowly work your way around here. Just remember to keep the fly moving all of the time. Do this little trick again, grab the feathers, push them forward like this, 
and cure that up. Spin that around before you cure up the last coat here. And here we go. Small gray mallard bait fish on a size 10 hook thanks for watching guys